Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, raise your hands. Give glory to our God because he is good and he is worthy of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. We bless your name, God, for all that you've done for us, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your grace. We thank you for your consistency, all your blessings. God, we just thank you. I was thinking about today earlier, and one thing's for certain is a lot of times we take the little things for granted. The reason that we can see and hear and we can walk, we can talk, we can eat food, clothes are on our back, designer shoes <laughs> are on our feet. We're able to drive to and fro, have a job we may not exactly like, but we have a job. Able to achieve in academics and write books and write songs and do all these magnificent things that we take for granted. There's a young teenager that I met this week who explained to me that they feel stuck because their creative juices isn't working. But I reminded them that if you step outside, you see creativity everywhere. And that is the same thing with us. When we wake up in the morning, we see God's goodness all around us. Why? Because we are simply alive. And for that reason alone, our heart should be full of praise. Our lips should be rejoicing because God is good and that we are alive. So for this, we say, Jesus, I love you. There's no words that can describe how I feel inside, but I love you because you love me first. It wasn't the alarm clock. It wasn't a text message or a phone call that woke me up. You did something that you normally do made my senses aware of the sun and the light and the sounds and brought me back from sleep up into life. And for that, God, we say thank you. We want to encourage you to share right now, like and comment as we get ready to pray. Some of y'all might have been thinking, were you praying already? No. <laughs> but as we get ready to pray and as we set the atmosphere for God to do what he's going to do, this moment is pregnant with possibilities. After this, you may get that phone call you've been waiting for. After this, that healing is going to flow. After this, that deliverance is going to take place. After this, that depression is going to fall off. After this, woo, after this. Father, we thank you right now. Thank you for this opportunity. God, thank you for just life. Whew. Thank you for life. We've been surrounded by death for the past year and a half. But we are standing here as evidence. They're still keeping God. And you're keeping us alive. Forgive us for taking your goodness and your mercy for granted. Our relationship with you, forgive us for making it transactional instead of relational. Forgive us, God, for not praying the way we should, not spending time with you the way that we should. Lord, forgive us. Restore unto us the joy of our salvation. Help us to see and hear and feel you once again. God, I pray right now for every teenager, every preteen, every young adult who may be watching live or who may stumble across this months from now, I pray, God, that your power arrests them even right now, that you begin to encourage their heart and give them strength for whatever they're going through right now. Whatever they, that may be plaguing their minds, whatever may be plaguing their hearts, God, give them that strength to keep on going because I, I know how it feels to not want to wake up in the morning but I know how it feels to have you touch me one more time. So God, I ask that you give it to them right now. Make it special. Make it sweatless. Make it unique. Do it for them so that they can wake up with a testimony that Jesus did it. Now God, save someone. Reclaim that backslider. Unite someone with this great church and this great ministry. 
I pray right now for our pastor, Pastor Nick. God, he does a lot. Too much for a man that I can even think of. And he doesn't ask for much. So God, I ask that you meet his heart's desires. That you be with his children. Both Julian and Livy. I ask you, Lord, to touch his wife. Touch his whole house. Touch his mind and his heart. His will and his emotions. Grant that secret petition. Even right now. I speak to his health. That it will be 100%. That blood will flow. That there will be no heart harm or danger that comes near him. We come against backlash and retaliations of the enemy. And we create a blood border, even a blood perimeter over our pastor right now. Just put the word in his belly. Holy Ghost, you do the work. Let worship heal. Let worship reveal. Let worship unlock. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let's emerge tonight. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, we want to tell Jesus how much we love him. Hallelujah. Listen to these words. Millions of words can describe the feeling I have down inside. It's hard to contain it. Come on. right there. Come on, y'all. Lift up your voices and get ready to tell them. Hallelujah. Come on, say it with me. Come on, say millions. Millions of words can describe the feeling the feeling I have now inside. It's
lift up your voice and tell him you love him. Come on, y'all. Help me say, I love you, Jesus. Praise Lord, everybody. So glad you can join us for another Emerging Worship Service every Saturday at 6 p.m. as we continue to worship the Lord, uh, focus our, ourselves around him, teach the word of God, um, something for our millennials and our young people. We want you to come on and uh, make sure you please share at this time. Comment, of course, if you can. Uh, let somebody know we're on this evening. Again, please share. We're continuing on our series about uh, what does the Bible say about uh, our mental health, our emotions, went through talking about hope, joy, peace. Um, the past few weeks we've been talking about how faith, trust, and today we're gonna to talk about how confidence helps us in our emotions, helps us in these difficult seasons. And um, we're praying for you. We hope that you're enjoying the word and receiving it and it's helping you with your life. Uh, for those of you that need to be saved, you don't know the Lord for yourself, reiterate to believe God that you will make the commitment to come to Jesus for the first time. Those of you who walked away from God, that you will make the decision to return home to him, uh, to recognize that you walked away from him and it's time to come back and get back into a relationship with the Lord. Those of you who need a church home, you'll make that commitment to join the Bethany Church, the Transformation Church of New Jersey. Uh, we're believing God you will make this connection. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God wants to give you everlasting life. So those of you who need to be saved for the first time, we're getting ready to pray for you. But you'll make that commitment. Those who need to rededicate your life, you need to reconnect with the Lord. We're believing God that you will make that reconnection this evening also. Need a church home, you'll connect. Come on, let's pray. Father, I thank you again for this moment. We appreciate you for this time. We honor you today for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. And thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. I pray that you would speak to us this evening, uh, that by your spirit, you'd begin to draw people to you. Um, those who need to be saved, those who need to rededicate their life, those who need a church home. No one can come unless you draw. We pray that you would draw this evening. Bring them to you. Bless us as we teach tonight. Give us ears to hear. Uh, teach us tonight in Jesus name. Amen. So we've been talking about faith and trust, um, and we're going to get into confidence tonight. And last week we went over the Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. 
understanding that no matter what phase of life I'm in, because he's my shepherd, if I follow him, I will lack nothing. That's something you got to start reminding to you, reminding yourself every day, all the time. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. I shall not want. That's confidence in the shepherd, faith in the shepherd, trust that the Lord is my shepherd and he will take care of me. In the good times and in the bad times, he will take care of you. The Lord is my shepherd. We talked about this last week. Um, also, reminding yourself, God is faithful. God is reliable. God is trustworthy. God is faithful. God is reliable. And God is trustworthy. Start reminding yourself of that, that God is faithful. He's reliable and he is trustworthy. That's why we can trust him because he's faithful, reliable, consistent. He's trustworthy. We also talked about this. Christ is in me. Christ is for me. Christ is with me and all will be well. Jesus is with you. The Bible lets us know that we're supposed to have confidence in God. Uh, Hebrews 4, 16 says, the Lord is my confidence. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Because I have confidence in him, I can go to him in prayer. This scripture also goes on to say, to find grace and mercy to help in the time of need. So when I'm struggling, I have the confidence that I can go to God to get the help that I need. You have to have this confidence in him. We say, preach, I've been praying, praying, praying. Guess what? Keep on praying. Pray like he hears you. Pray like he's going to respond to you. There are times where it's going to feel like he's distant and not responding, but keep on praying. You have confidence that he will help, and he will help you. Matter of fact, he's actually helping you right now when you feel like he's not helping you. It may not be the help that you desire, but it's the help that he's giving you to help you make it through what you're going through. Have confidence in God. Confidence in prayer. First John tells us we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. We ask anything according to his will, anything that pleases him, we can have confidence. Uh, sometimes we bring what we want to the table. And God doesn't respond the way we want. But the reality is God wants us to ask for anything that pleases him. And if he is pleased, he will take care of you. How do I know what pleases him? Read your Bible. Your Bible tells you what pleases him. It says, and since we know he hear, hears us, when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. If we ask for what will please him, he will give us what pleases him. And some of y'all say, well, well, geez, what, what about me? If it's going to please God, trust me, it's going to please you too. Being in God's will is better than your will. God knows how to answer prayers. He just wants to hear what pleases him. So when we pray, we have confidence that God hears us and he will answer when he hears what pleases him. Last thing and we're done. Know where all comes from. Know who your confidence comes from. It does not start in you. Your confidence comes from God. The Bible says such confidence we have through Christ before God. So I'm confident, not because of me. I'm confident through Christ because I can only get to God through Jesus. So I'm confident through Christ. I have this assurance that I can get to God because of Jesus. Not that we are competent in, our, in ourselves to claim anything of ourselves for ourselves. It's not about us and how smart we are, how strong we are, but our competence comes from God. Our intelligence, everything we have, our money, our resources comes from God. And there are seasons in all of our lives where our, the things we're the most confident in cannot help us during troubling seasons. But God wants us to know that he is the source of of your trust, the source of your faith. He is your confidence. As Paul says in Romans, he, the Holy Spirit helps us to hope and to believe. Our confidence is in God and it comes from him. Remember, everything comes from God. Ask the Lord to help increase your faith, increase your trust and your confidence.
Um, for those of you who need to give your life to the Lord, you need to rededicate your life, you need to connect to the church, put your name in the comment section. Someone from our team will connect with you. They'll check in with you, have a conversation with you, and make sure that you are connected, whether you're going to be saved for the first time, rededicate your life, or join the church. We would love for you to make a decision right now. Put your name in the comment section. Someone from our team will connect with you. Uh, also, it's time to give. We always sow into this moment. You can sow your tithes and offering. Uh, you can give a sacrificial gift. Sow your seed this evening. Um, again, teach your children how to give. Train them on how to give. Out of gratitude, out of a heart of worship, believing that God will respond as we give. Um, so sow that seed right now. Out of a heart of worship, he gives seed to the sower, bread to the eater. God loves a cheerful, worshiping giver. That's what he wants, a cheerful, worshiping giver. It's time to give that seed this evening. Trust God. So glad you can join us today. Join us tomorrow. It's Men's Day. Pastor Darius Daniels will be with us at 8 o'clock. Bishop Samuel Blake's with us at 11. Uh, we'll have Bible study on Wednesday and back uh, this coming uh, Saturday again. Next Saturday, another emerging worship service. God bless you all. We love you. We appreciate you. Can't wait to see you soon. God bless you.